This video is going to be a topic about linear regression, but it's going to look like it's non-linear regression, but it still fits in the world of linear regression. So I'm going to call this one not quite non-linear regression. At the very end, I will show you what separates out linear from non-linear regression as a formality. But for the most part, I'm really quite pleased with how non-linear linear regression can be. So we'll do a quick recap on linear regression. And then I'll jump into a quick generalization, which actually contains a lot of detail. But we're not going to get into that uh, in this class. Uh, it's basically the topic of a whole other class, this one quick generalization. So then I'll address linear how and explain how linear regression is linear. I think it'll make more sense when we go into some data, and I will then showcase how nonlinear linear regression can be. After that example, I'll jump back into this whiteboard scenario here and give you a more formal description of what nonlinear regression is. So let's start with a quick recap of linear regression. I'll write down what the model looks like in statistics, where we have a bunch of data, which is conditional on some x-axis value being equal to little x. And we assume that data is normally distributed with a functional form that is indeed linear, dependent on that conditional value x. And there's some noise to suggest that not all the data, y, will fall on this line, but they'll be relatively close to it. So this is to go along in your head with an image that essentially looks like this, where we have a line going through some data. And that's supposed to be a straight line, not a curve, even though it is slightly curved. So that was our quick recap of linear regression. Let's look at a generalization of linear regression. And the generalization all happens in how you specify the mean. It's possible to specify the conditional mean of y dependent on more than one x-axis value. In fact, you can have, I don't know, some k values, where you then really just have beta naught plus beta 1 times x1 plus beta 2 times x2 plus all the way out to however many you have. And almost a better way to write this is in summation notation. If you are so willing to jump down the road of the extra summation notation. So what this is essentially saying is you can theoretically use more than one variable, x-axis variable, to predict the variable y on the y-axis. You can use more than one variable to predict y. So if you're trying to predict a plant's growth, not only does it depend on the amount of sun it gets, it also depends on the amount of water it gets, and in some sort of negative relationship, uh, dependent on the least amount of salt it gets. I don't know, I'm making something up as I go here, but I hope you can see that a plant's growth, let's say measured in me, uh, millimeters, is going to depend on some amount of sun, some amount of water, and you know soil quality in some ways. So there's going to be multiple variables that are used to explain a plant's growth. So that begs the question of linear how and linear regression literally means linear in the, they're called coefficients, beta k. 
linear regression literally means liter linear in the coefficients. Betas, the betas themselves need to be linear. And notice that's exactly what's happening here in this generalization of linear regression. We are adding up beta times some values. But these values, the x, k, really can be whatever they want. So if you had one or more of particular values, which was, let's call it x2 prime, and x2 prime is really log of x2, well, then that totally works. As long as it's beta 2 times the log of some variable on an x-axis, then this still fits in the world of linear regression. So I think that's not terribly easy to see until you see it in action. And so the specific example I'm going to use is I'm going to take some variable x1, and I'm going to add on in this generalization of linear regression x1 squared. And I'm going to have my kth coefficient times that x1 term squared. But notice all I'm doing is squaring that data. And the beta k is still being added in linearly. So let's see that example as it applies to So here is that example that we looked at for linear regression, where we fit just a straight line through the data. Let's amend this just a little bit so that we can separate it out from this other version of linear regression. That I'm now explaining. So we still have our data stay on the x axis and infection risk on the y axis. I'm just going to fit a new version of this model, still using the function LM, which stands for linear model, which is to say this is still in the world of linear regression. But I am taking into account stay powered, uh, I mean, to the second power, which is going to give us some curvature to the line through these data. Now, as you can see, there is some kind of curvature through these data. But this is still in the world of linear regression. So fitting the model goes just fine, as you can see. Plotting, oh, you know what we should do? We should name this one L and, I don't know, NL, just to keep them different. So let's go fit NL is going to be the nonlinear looking version. It takes a little bit more work to plot the nonlinear looking, though it's still a linear model, version of this, but we can do it nonetheless. There's got to be some care taken with the order that the data shows up in on the x-axis. So I'm going to specify the order of the data through the variable O. And then I'm going to ensure that the x-axis and the fitted curve looking line show up in the same order. And there we have it. So indeed, fitting a variable, x-axis variable named stay, and then stay squared gives us a quadratic fit through the data, which is indeed nonlinear. As you can see here, even though that's still within the world of linear regression. So if this is still in the world of linear regression, it makes one wonder what then is nonlinear regression. And all we have to do to break the linearity of linear regression is ensure that the coefficients, beta k's, show up nonlinearly. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this in this class since linear regression is so general. But I think it will help you to see what nonlinear regression looks like. It's still specifying a conditional expectation. 
and we'll just do it with like two x-axis variables. Maybe you have something like e to the power of negative beta 1 times x1 divided by, I don't know, beta 0 plus beta 2 times x2. Now notice the coefficients, the betas themselves, show up nonlinearly. Another example might look like beta naught plus beta 1 times sine of beta 2 times x1 plus beta 3 times x3. Uh, I don't know, something like that. I'm getting a little lost in my indices here. But hopefully you can see that by putting this beta term inside sign has made the rest of these seemingly pluses into a non-linear regression example, much like the betas here show up non-linearly. So this was my attempt to show you that linear regression is highly non-linear if you treat it correctly, but it takes some care in dealing with that. I think this is a classic example to show that the orange line is indeed relating stay to infection risk in what you would think of as a nonlinear relationship, even though it shows up in the world of linear regression, just highlighting the generality of linear regression.